on 29th october the whole country is mourning for that one person yes puneet rajkumar he was just 46 years old the person who exercises works out but still he succumbed to the cause of heart failure that took his life it's still shocking and i cannot believe it it has actually happened so in this video i'll be explaining everything in detail in the easiest way ever so anybody can understand it clearly i'll also be including the time stamps below so please feel free to go across whichever part you want to listen to also so the first thing that comes to our mind is that how come someone who's young and healthy end up getting heart failure so firstly you have to understand the difference between what's heart attack and cardiac failure so heart attack is when there is less blood supply going to the heart and because of which there is damage occurring to it whereas cardiac arrest is that when the whole heart fails to pump as a whole so what is this causing factor to this is the development of plaques doctor why would the plaque build up so the plaque builds up because of the chronic inflammatory reaction that takes place in the blood vessel now what is this inflammatory reaction so this can be acute inflammation or it can be chronic inflammation so let me explain so let me give an example suppose i push you from a flight of stairs you fall down and uh, you break your knee so what happens that you're starting to bleed so your body recognizes that okay there's a wound is there and i have to do something to take care of it so that area it becomes red it becomes uh, increased temperature over there it starts to pain and it gets swollen up these are the signs of inflammation and this is what is called as an acute inflammation on the other hand what is chronic inflammation that for example um, i give you like i take a fork and start rubbing on my forearm like i'm rubbing for maybe like 2 years i'm doing the same thing over and over again so what happens is that i'm not giving time from that region to heal so what happens is that that area of my skin will probably become thin it will become friable the skin color will change and it's a permanent change that's taking place because i'm doing non stop um insult to the skin for like 2 years so this my friends is called as chronic inflammation hope you could understand with these examples good so doctor what is this mechanism behind sudden heart attack without warning okay so uh, as i already said the development of plaque which takes place in the blood vessel so there will be occlusion in the supply of the blood because of which you start presenting with symptoms and all but sometimes there is a presence of plaque but still there is no obstruction and there is no symptoms and this vulnerable plaque sometimes it can break off so once it breaks off your body again thinks that okay there is a wound that's taking place inside the blood vessel and it clots up within minutes and it blocks the whole vessel so that is what leading to the sudden cardiac arrest without warning so this should be probably one of the reasons that has happened to me though he seemed like a healthy person normal without any diseases out of a sudden this fatal thing occurred okay doctor now i'm worried so how do i find out which chest pain is because of a heart problem or because of something else okay so i told about the development of plaque and because of that there's no occlusion to the blood flow okay so because of all these factors this leads to decreased blood supply to your heart and the patient might present with a pain in the chest also known as angina and what you must understand is that if there's decrease in the demand automatically the body can adjust with the supply for it but if there's an increase in the demand your heart cannot go up beyond its level to reach its level of supply so for that reason it's always said that you should not go beyond your limits and strain yourself too much with it so which pain is important as a cardiac pain in fact it's not a pain as such for example um, an elephant is sitting on top of you you feel like there is tightness and this breathlessness it's somewhat like that 
but it's for a couple of minutes, like two to three minutes. And it's a pain which radiates uh, to your shoulders, to your arms, to your neck, jaw or back. And it can also be associated with sweating, giddiness or breathlessness. And sometimes without even these associating factors, it can still present as an angina. So how to find out which chest pain is not because of the heart cause? Suppose you go to hospital and you go to the doctor and be like, I have a pain only in one particular point. And you can pinpoint saying, doctor, here a pain, or maybe the pain is here. And you'd be like, it's a pricking pain, which lasts for like a second or so. So that probably is because of a muscular skeleton or a bone pain and not related to your heart. Because an anginal pain is usually diffuse and present in a larger area. Now if you're confused with a muscular skeleton or a bone pain, so what you can do is that try to move your upper limbs or your body and see if the pain is increasing. If that's the case, then you know it's not a cardiac origin. If you're confused with acid reflux, then think about the lifestyle. For example, if it's a person who regularly eats oily foods or non-veg stuff, and if he's presenting with heartburn, then probably it's because of his acidity. But on the other hand, if it's a person who does not consume all this and is presenting with heartburn, and that is something you should be worried about and get yourself consulted. And on another scenario, if you're walking down the road and you started experiencing these symptoms of chest discomfort and you feel that it started leaving upon rest, then it's advisable to get yourself consulted and the doctor will probably do a stress test or like a treadmill test where he will be on the ECG limb leads and try to figure out and pick up from the ECG what is causing this discomfort? Okay, so if Puneet got himself checked before this terrible thing happened, could he be saved? Well, my answer would be perhaps not. Because if you're having um, symptoms or if there's a presence of the developing plaque which is obstructing the blood flow, then it's easy to get diagnosed. But if it's the vulnerable plaque, then it's very difficult to diagnose because uh, there is no obstruction to the blood flow. It's going normally and the plaque is there. So it's hard to find out when there is no symptoms or there is no obstruction to the blood vessel. If you think about using bypass or stents, these can only be used to treat if there's narrowing to the blood vessel. But if there's a uh, vulnerable plaque which is not causing obstruction, these things you cannot use. The reason here is because suppose in the blood vessel, there is developing a plaque, but there is no presenting obstruction to that and you plan to do a bypass surgery. So what happens is that the blood won't go via the bypass, but it will go through the normal blood vessel, leading to making the bypass fail. So doctor, you said you cannot do bypass surgery. So what about using stent? Now that is something tricky, mainly because number one, as I already said, it's difficult to identify a vulnerable plaque which is not causing narrowing. Secondly, by using stents, there are high chances that we can make the stable plaque become an unstable plaque and lead to a burst. So that's again a very tricky situation to use stents. So the next question is, Doctor, uh, as you said, we cannot do bypass or do stenting. So now what to do? So in that case, we come to medication like the common ones are the aspirin and statins but there's a drawback these medications show a huge benefit of secondary prevention of heart attack and not primary prevention of heart attack what i mean by this so if you're a person who already got heart attack and you want to prevent a second heart attack then these medications are beneficial but if you're a person who has never got heart attack and you want to prevent that very first heart attack to happen then it's less beneficial. So doctor, we cannot do stenting, no bypass surgery, even medications you are saying less beneficial. So what do we do? So my friends, this is where the part of finding out what are the risk factors or what are the things that cause the chronic inflammation. So this can be divided into controllable risk factors and uncontrollable risk factors. So what are the controllable risk factors? They are your hypertension, your blood sugar levels, your habits like smoking, your drinking, your lifestyle. Whereas uncontrollable risk factors are your growing age, your race, your ethnicity, 
history of family history of diseases etc so from both of these the only thing what we have in our hand is the controllable risk factors so let's talk about that so how does having a healthy life prevent heart attack so we have come across everywhere in this social media talking about healthy lifestyle healthy diet good food nutrition but there's something that we always miss out that the food industry itself they give importance to the taste of the food rather than the health of the food and giving importance to the taste that's what they want because they want more consumers because this is business and these animals are fed with steroids and drugs and other medications just for the sole purpose to produce fat and if you're a person who believes that we are what we eat then there's nothing to be surprised if you're gaining weight and being unhealthy so i give a situation to choose between kfc chicken bucket here or a bowl of salad here and i made you start since morning and i'm giving an option to choose for dinner so we both know which one you will choose and there's nothing to discuss about it right and the next component is sugar we already have enough amount of sugar on a daily means and on top of that we add table sugar to it and increase the quantity more and more so what we do is that we are giving excess work to the pancreas to produce more insulin and so much extra work and this can lead to a very bad vascular health so the next thing i want to talk is exercise so doctor how can exercise help us preventing from heart attack let me give an example suppose you are on your way to go home and there is road works happening and it's blocked so what will you do will you wait 2 3 days for them to finish the work and then go home or will you find an alternative route some way or the other and go home you'll go with the second option right similarly in your body if there is an occlusion in the blood vessel the body itself makes new blood vessels to take the blood and reach its destination and this my friends is known as collateral circulation so when we are exercising regularly what we are doing is we are encouraging this collateral circulation to improve and increase thereby making sure there is enough blood going to its destination but doctor we need to used to exercise and he used to gym almost every day and how could this happen so for me to conclude that i will not be able to do that because i don't have sufficient medical history of his but i can give probable reasons to this one mainly exercise in moderate level is fine but if you go in excess amount and crossing beyond your limits that is when this can go paradoxical and be quite inflammatory for example if you are a person who is regularly gymming and lifting weights then you're fine to do what you do but if a new person comes and starts lifting weight and he's not accustomed to doing all this then this is something which you should be always care be careful about so the main important thing that people miss out when they talk about this nutrition health and diet is that the presence of lack of sleep and excess stress so doctor how is sleep even any way related to heart attacks sleep being an important factor i myself have seen people who have died in their sleep and probably seen in a vegetative state in the morning and there's something known as sleep apnea where the person while they're sleeping the body stops breathing so people who are having sleep apnea are highly in the risk for getting hypertension diabetes stroke heart attacks and even road traffic accidents so people with chronic insomnia they try to mask this problem by having more caffeine in the morning and rather than investing on how they can improve their sleep or consulting a doctor they do this thing of masking it with caffeine and that should not be done finally the second important component which i mentioned was stress did you know that there were two people who died of cardiac arrest and one person that committed suicide after knowing the news of puneet's death it's just shocking right people after getting to know this sad news with all this depression kicking in and the impending doom they just lost their life this news can't get more worse even if you have done everything that i've mentioned to have a healthy lifestyle that we diet the nutrition that necessarily is not going to prevent 
you from getting a heart attack. What I mean to say is that we have absolute no control of how many years we are going to live. One main example is Michael Jackson. He had got himself a team of expert doctors and wanted to live for 150 years. And what happened? He died at the age of 50. The team of expert doctors failed? Yes. That's what we have no control of. The number of years we went to live. So what you can do is think about improving quality of life. Aspire others and yourselves to make a healthier lifestyle and making a healthy community. So doctor, can COVID-19 be related to anything of heart diseases? Well, there's something known as subclinical myocarditis. What I mean to say is that subclinical meaning you have the disease but it's not presenting and myocarditis meaning it's an inflammation of your heart muscle. So around 50 to 60 percent of people who have contact with coronavirus, they might be having but nobody knows because it's not presenting, right? So what you know is your heart is inflamed or irritated and um, when you strain yourself and give so much excess pressure to it, that's when this can be extra additional harm to your body. So now for conclusion, well I've got patients come up to me saying that they have already got heart attack and doctor I want to make sure I don't get heart attack again and I want to be there for my kids and my family when I grow old. Well, all I can say is that you can start off by being with your family now. Because I myself can't predict about my future. I don't know what's going to happen to me in the right next second. How am I supposed to tell about other people? Nobody knows when the last goodbye is. So love your people. Be with them. So that every goodbye is cherished and you have nothing to regret. So again, this is really heartbreaking to know about the demise of Puneet. And all I can do is pray for their family members so they get all the strength that they need now. I want you guys to share this video to people who you actually love and you care about. If you think this video can be beneficial to them, do let them know about it. As your life and health is precious for you, it's my duty to take care of it. So on that note, as I always say, please take care, stay safe. I will see you in the next one. Bye.